This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Thank you. Great, great to see. Thank you. Great to see you on the Rugby Odds TRO. It's season three, episode five. That's right. We're cruising right along into this third season, but we have a great, great show for you this week. We have a retired USA Rugby and Major League Rugby star in Will McGee joining us, and my colleagues John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE oh. legend, and King Gifte Bailu. Uh, the inventor of words are in the sponsor opportunity green room prepping for tonight's show. And while they are, we can look at our your name here, TRO slate of what we have on the show. And again, you can see we have a full slate. So let's not waste any more time. Let's bring in the Hall of Famer of the WWE, John Bradshaw Layfield and King Gifte Belu. Now, hi guys. Okay, all right. We'll get right to it. John, what's on your mind? <laughs> I've joined the loyal order of the Buffalo is what I've done. Let's go. Kind of looks like out. I am one with the soul of North America. My Started nature. with the super pig. Now's the Buffalo. I, yep. I see it. <laughs> super pigs are coming down from Canada. We got the Buffalo waiting on them. Okay, I like that. I like that. That makes absolutely no sense for this program. But in the meantime, we do have makes our all, all the sense. All right, that yeah. is a great American representing great American values, and you just dismissing him because you just don't understand the nuance of it. Bam! No, bam! No, bam. Pay attention bam. to him. <laughs> bam! Yeah, I'm just dismissing him. Period. That's got nothing to do with anything that he's wearing on his head. You'd be good if you like wore something all over your head where you couldn't see you and then like tied a weight to it and jumped in the river. All right, with that, let's go to our records. Last week, John, you had a you had a pretty good week. You had a you know a very good week. Gift, not so much. You were a hey. game under 500. You want to say anything? 14. I was good. Super rugby. I was good. Okay. Leadership. I was good. Right. That's all that matters. That's all that all matters. That's all, that, all that's all that matters. Everything else is uh, is okay. It's okay. okay. All right, 18 and 19 was your record last week. John, you were very good. You were 23 and 14. <laughs> uh, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, you were really, yes, really good. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. We've got merch now for this show. We don't have any fans. Nobody's going to buy it. doesn't matter like that. We're going we're to have a crown for King Ibalu. We're going to have a cowboy hat for me. And here's your merch. It's like a, it's a candle. It's a Matt McCarthy candle. You know what, John? I was complimenting you on your, your really, really good week last week. Of Thank course, you. of course I was one game better. I had 24 victories. You had 23, which means you had one more loss and gift. Unfortunately for you, it means that you get the wooden spoon this week. Hey, everybody's got to eat. I uh, have something to eat with. We also have the walk of shame to award and gift. You're obviously in line for it this week, but you're not going to be alone because John is going to join you in the walk of shame because of his listening to you in the six nations, which made you both go one and two. Fortunately for fans betting, I was two and one in the six nations. And, but for a little hiccup by Ireland, I would have been three and oh. So congratulations, John Bradshaw Layfield and King gift a Belu. You too are in the walk of shame. Can together. we bring up again yeah. that you bet on England? You bet on England. You backed England. Yes, because you were an English fan. And how did that turn out? You won. You're an English yes. fan. You should be very happy. <laughs> and I also bet with France. And how did that work out? Thank you bet you. against Scotland. See, I have ancestors from Scotland. I'm not betting against my ancestral home. You, on the other hand, are from England, obviously, and are betting for England. You guys have a lot to say about the Six Nations. It sounds like you know what you're talking about, yet you're doing one and two with your picks. So I don't know where this is all going. Before that, I was on six and oh. I started off six and oh. You're the, you're the hare. One and two. That's a different point. You're the hare, and I'm a sprinting tortoise. Okay? Nope. nope. You're, so, a, you're a wax pig. You're a wax pig is what you are. That right there is you. Wax you get pig. that wax pig on www.rugbywrapup.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, 
we have to take a quick break because we have a special, special guest, Mr. Will McGee. He of USA Rugby fame, now retired. He also played in all the professional setups on American soil in the history of America, including Pro Rugby USA and the MLR, Major League Rugby. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about Major League Rugby and the Premiership right after this. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. Whammy. Whammy. You know, trying to just come back from a commercial break. It's in, it's next to impossible with these idiots. I, I beg your pardon, ladies and gentlemen. Not not Will. He's not the idiot. Will McGee, the great Will McGee, who has to experience this this stuff off camera between the divas Layfield and a Bailu. But in the meantime, Mister Mister, are you referring to us as the idiots? Mr. McGee, it's great. He to makes see that you. horrible intro for the great Will McGee, and you can call us the idiots over here. Will McGee has played <laughs> in a pro team league in American history. So embarrassed for you. And well, you gave you the worst intro possible. This man is a USA rugby legend. He's a global <laughs> legend. And you gave a rotten, rotten <laughs> interview. Promo. Right. It was terrible. You know what, Layfield? Why don't you go <laughs> yourself? Okay? Wow. A little bit of listening. <laughs> What you need right there, pal. Wash that mouth out, all right? <laughs> Will McGee, the USA rugby legend. You were also one of the few people in the history of America to play in both professional setups on American soil as a member of the Denver Stampede and then a member of the Colorado Raptors, who be or the Glendale Raptors, who then became the Colorado Raptors. And then you went down to Austin, Texas wear your big cowboy hat welcome to the program sir it's a pleasure thank you it's uh it's an honor to be on here and and talk about some pigs i'm excited that's right did you say pigs because uh pigs or- hell bent on the super pigs coming down from canada <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about the super pigs too but I was, i'm excited for the pigs all right fair well, enough well this is actually a matt mccarthy uh merch piece that we're selling on our <laughs> side it's it's, uh, it's got a little candle in it. it's a matt guy looks like matt right there and it makes just as much sense <laughs> you, you see you see what i have to deal with week in and week out well it's impossible if you had teammates like this would, would you would you ever we're not teammates like- we're not friends <laughs> gift and i do not like you we're like the rest of the eight billion people on this planet we they're the opposition like you. they're the opposition they're trying to stop you doing your job Let's talk a little Major League Rugby, Will. What's your take on the season so far? What do you think? Well, how do you like it in retrospect now that you're retired? Yeah, it's been great. It's been awesome. Uh, the first weekend was super cool. San Diego, obviously, with the, the new record attendance was incredible. Um, I think the level of play continues to grow. And um, I think we've got 12 pretty competitive teams this year. So, it's uh, yeah, it's exciting to watch. Uh, you were part of the Austin Gilgronies and you were part of the, the Raptors two somewhat controversial franchises if you will yeah anything that i touch turns to you know what so stay clear well what does it need what needs to happen for mlr to become the something that rivals the premiership top 14 things like that is it just all about money that that they need um, be able to pay their players more i mean no i don't think so i think i think like it, it's kind of a cliche but for me it would be just c- continue growing the game at the grassroots level and just the more and more participation the more kids that are playing the more parents that are taking their kids to watch games um, and all of that's going to start helping i think if you look at the if you look at the mlr franchises that are really doing a good job that's what they're focusing a lot of their time and resources and, and money into. And I do think now in five, six, seven years, like, sorry, five or six, seven years from inception, that's now starting to pay dividends. Um, and it's, it's tough. It's a slow burn. So I think, I think those teams that are doing that are really, are really getting it right. Uh, last year, uh, Matt incorrectly made himself the champion of the records uh, for MLR because Correct. of the, the I would call it the unsettled results of of what happened with the. I'll Gronies. call it in your facts. opinion. I'll call in your it opinion, facts. Do you We're interrupting feel the king. That you that 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 the game, the championship game, as it should have been played with L.A. versus Austin, 
Do you feel like that should have maintained as the scoring line, basically meaning that all wins and everything stayed sustained? Or do you feel like, hey, take them off because you guys didn't get a chance to play the way that you should have? Oh, I mean, I, I think you've got to still credit New York. They won, right? They did win. Damn right. They won, fair and square. Um, what I think is what I think is upsetting as players was that for whatever happened, you know, in the, in whatever took place, it didn't happen what from. You, what are you uh, hinting at? What it didn't, it at? didn't happen from a, a player standpoint. So like the players were punished for something that ha- they had no control over, and that's where it was kind of just, you know, we felt we sat there in the hotel room in the hotel meeting room before the last game of the season, and it felt like someone had just ripped your heart out. Like you built something over six, seven months longer than that two two three years for some of the guys in Austin you know Mason Peterson even longer right five years involved with that team so it's like you, you just ripped that out on, on on a decision like that it was just you know it was just heartbreaking and yeah it was it was upsetting but lessons learned so yeah don't I send think. out emails dumb dumb that's how this all happened right? and also it sounds like also all those points should have been credited in which means Matt you lost last year just put it out that you lost last year Miami. <laughs> Matt, 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 don't worry. I tell Butch, he's one of my best friends every week, that we beat them 50s era in preseason. So, you know, we know how it would have ended. Hey, listen, this all allows us to segue to our Major League Rugby lightning round, where we all go ahead and pick a game. But let's start off with our guest. Uh, I would take, with the most confidence, Seattle minus 10 against Dallas. Dallas had a good comeback in that second half. They've got the new fly half scrum half combination that are pretty good players. The, you know, the team that died in the final 20 minutes was basically the war, the, the Warriors at home and the team from Dallas adapted. Right. So tough pick, John. I'm going with the hot Atlanta. No offense to my friend, uh, King and, Malu and the gold mine Atlanta looked great against Seattle and you realize that Atlanta really was a a good team because you see how good Seattle has played this this last week I think Atlanta is a pretty solid team and I think they're going to take care of business at home (laughs) yes look I'm gonna go and take this New York versus old glory game New York has been playing their hot hand but old glory you said surprising I'm not surprised they got new coach they got a new direction they got a new idea and uh look old glory continuing to do it they're at on the road but Holding up for DC, I'm going to give it to Old Glory covering the spread against New York Iron. That's a big pick gift. Um, you'll be losing that one yeah. too. No, <laughs> it's not. You're up, Stephen the Lizard Lewis, <laughs> is what it is. And because of that, you will not pick anything against New York, and you will not allow anybody to say anything. They're the about champions. Any New York. They're the champions. And my MLR record Last year. picking this Last week year. is far superior to both of yours. No, it wasn't. So I was four and one, moron. Again. Oh yeah, this you were week. Three and two. Overall. Overall. Oh yeah. Look yeah. at the stats right here. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> You just said this week. I was four and one. You're three and two. This is why so Will's nine, not going to get the pick again because you two are whining in your crybaby soup while I am victorious. Because we know you're just going to try and pick combined. New York. Like, why Why do we even need to so, have this whole conversation? You're just going to be like something, 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 not New York, but actually New York. Go ahead. San Diego going Danny. on the road into the Cats Meow wow. trademark. Wow. I'm taking Danny Barrett and the hometown Sabercats to win that battle. Will, out of respect, we're going to give you another shot. All right, so I get the last. I get Chicago, Utah. So I get, I get, all, I get a lot of. Or, or do I get to pick anything? No, you get Chicago, Utah. That's okay. a good point. <laughs> uh, well, I have to be true to what I wrote down here, hoping that I wasn't going to have to pick this one. Um, but I have gone Utah plus three. I think, I think Chicago. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. A lot of my friends on that team, of course, on the Chicago team. Uh, I think they need a little bit more time. I think they'll come good, but I think they need a bit more time. Wow. Will, you know these guys on the Chicago team. I was really interested that first game. I I thought they just looked disoriented. Was that because they were just a new team? Uh, What was your take on that first game? Because they they just didn't look good as a rugby team. Looked like they had a lot of individual talent, but the game itself was not that great. Yeah, I thought they looked really good in like in certain aspects, but those aspects they look really good don't win you rugby games, which is a weird way of putting it. But they they looked after the ball well without really getting quick ball. Their set piece, the scrum was okay, but line out struggled. Like it, it's hard to win games, and I and I think what Gift said is right. DC are much improved. Um, 
So whatever they've been working on over there has been, you know, is paying paying up in in the early in early round. Obviously, they had a buy last week, but um, and I just think Utah, Paul CK last week, man, he looked like <laughs> Dan Carter, Mar Nonu, Paul Emmerich, Mike Herkus wrapped into one person, and he was just a freak. So I think again, that's a great matchup for Rice v. Paul. Um, I just think Utah might just get it done. So, Will, I'm not going to give away that you live in Indianapolis. I'm not going to tell people that. But you were originally from where? London, England. Perfect. That allows us to segue to the Premiership, the Gallagher Premiership. They've got five matches on the tap for this coming weekend. What what wisdom do you have about your fellow Brits? Uh, the Premiership is an interesting one at the moment, isn't it? Because it kind of comes back to John's point from earlier that, you know, it's not just here in the U.S. that, you know, the, the, the governing bodies are looking to grow the sport and continue to make it relevant. So, uh, and I always, I always, this is, this is maybe a hot take for me. I always struggle to watch the premiership during the six nations. Cause again, it just like, yeah, it just, <laughs> it's important, right? You've got to keep the competition going. The development players get more game time and all of that sort of stuff, but it just doesn't do it for me. So Ooh. hot take. Hot take. And and they're down to ten teams. Is that gonna is are they gonna be down to nine next year? You know how many teams are gonna fold because of the finance? I don't know, but the latest ones are over in Wales, right? They're having that big struggles, and they're talking. I, I think I saw something on Twitter earlier about them looking at potentially two teams, East and West regions. They're scrapping the four. My old team Ealing potentially joining the uh, the Trail Finders URC. The URC, yeah, it's all going on. They can't get in the Premiership, so they got to go find somewhere to compete at the highest level all right we're talking about the corporate money let's talk about making people money give me a pick for the premiership and why i like newcastle at home to london irish i thought newcastle they played well last week against saris obviously my good mate of mine greg didn't help the cause with his red card in like the 15th minute but he um, was there for saris <laughs> but i still i think newcastle at home are a, are, a, are a tough team to beat no one likes going up there all right, John, you like a match in this setup in the Premiership? I do, and I'm going to go with the team that uh, has cost me the last two weeks. I'm going to go with Series. I think Series finally finds a way to win. I think the best rugby club in the world. they got a lot of depth. They've lost the last two games. I think they win this week against Sale. Mr. Uh, King A. Baylou? Look, uh, I, the game uh, might be a little bottom bunching, but I'm going to go Northampton over Bristol. Just not good. Like, you can't even say anything. I don't even know historically. I mean, this is really bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't have anything to say about Northampton. This, I think it's very well said. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, so I was... Bristol, Bristol is like the Matt McCarthy of Premier. <laughs> Just look at the facts. Look at the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. These two morons couldn't pick each other's noses, let alone these matches. So. Just go along with what I'm that saying. That was childish. Gonna, that was that was really childish. I'm, I'm picking was, the Tigers. That was inappropriate. Tigers, childish. Tigers oh, versus dude. taking a bath. How you <laughs> doing? Tigers over bath in a big way. Uh, Will, before we let you go, who's hey Will? Have you ever seen Matt McCarthy's uh, action figure? <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm currently I'm currently trying to scroll on the uh, the super group predictor to find where your guys' names are because you're not in the top five like myself on the. <laughs> The rugby wrap up uh, on <laughs> which which professional setup? Uh, Major League Rugby. Okay, well, sometimes the interns poke their noses into my picks. So <laughs> just you know, relax, you all, relax three, over there. Three McGee. Two last week, four for one. I mean, guys, eleven from eleven, two weeks in. So we're going there. Wow, arbitrage, insider trading. That's what we're wow. bringing up you on charges. Okay. Hot why are shot. we not having him pick all the games? Why, and right? why are we not having him host the show? Like a rookie <laughs> hot shot guest coming on the rugby odds. Okay. He's good okay. at what he does. He's like hey. a professional rugby guy. You're like a professional Steve Lewis uh, living his ass person. Oh, man. <laughs> that is just, you know what? Will, you've been more than gracious, and I apologize for the behavior of certain people on this panel. Uh, before you go, who's going to win Major League Rugby Shield 2023? Seattle. Ooh, wow. okay. The third in six seasons, the Seattle Seawolves, as per Will McGee, will be hearing from many of his friends on the various teams throughout the league after they see this program. <laughs> will, thank you, sir, for your kindness, patience, and time. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Good luck this weekend with all your picks. Will McGee, lending some class to the 
Rugby Odds. We'll be right back after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and it's physically impossible for us to cover all the professional setups in any kind of depth without giving them short shrift. So instead, what we're going to do, as John futzes with his headwear, uh, we're going to do what we call our new soon-to-be scrapped segment, Your Company Name, Quick Picks Round, right? So we're going to start with the Vancouver Sevens, guys, the women first, and we're just going to pick the nation that is going to win the Vancouver Sevens on the women's side. John, you go first. England, lousy pick. Gift, go ahead. Yo, Nye Tapper, Cheddar Emba, and the rest of that USA rugby team. Ooh. I like it. Ooh. I, like it. I like it. I should have gone with Nye Tapper. That's a great pick. Great pick. All right. That's I'm going homie. with the Kiwis. I'm going yep. with the Kiwis. The men. John. New Zealand. Gift. Oh, God. This is going to kill me. Argentina. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, he lives in Brazil. Oh. <laughs> Oh, gift. You're not going to be able to leave. You better get a nose and glasses when you leave the apartment. <laughs> I, I'm going to go with Fiji. Fiji to hoist the uh, thingy in Vancouver. Let's move on across so the that pond, that was your professional guys. pick. Fiji to host the thingy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to – yeah, that thing. Articulate. It's yeah. articulate. All right. Uh, URC, United Rugby Championship. It's back at full strength, sort of. Uh, John, who do you like in this – set up across the ocean i talked to skulks shulks brits and he absolutely despises you matt he really does not like you he loves king Ebelo, but he told me go with the stormers this week they're the best team in south africa one of the best teams of urc i'm going stormers did he appreciate the fact that you assassinated his name he mentioned that but yeah <laughs> who do you like look in chaos there is beauty that can come from it and Cardiff and Ulster game is going to be one that is not just about the game. It's not about the players, but it's about the honor of an entire country. Look at Cardiff to take out Ulster in an upset for this week for URC. Power to the people. Whammy. And government. (laughs) I'm going to go with my buddy Steve Lewis's hometown, Glasgow Warriors over Zebra. It is impossible for you to be a bigger sycophant than Steve Lewis. Impossible. Let's go all the way to Japan, to Japan's Rugby League One. John, who do you like in this excellent professional setup? I'm going with the Dinobores over the Liners. The Liners could be the worst rugby team in the history of rugby since Texas invented rugby. I'm going with the Dinobores. Okay, there's a lot in there. We're going to be uh, on Reddit about the Texas rugby thing. Gift? Look. This is one of those games where you see the weak rise above the strong. You know, Green Rockets are taking on the Black Rams. It's a lot to be able to take from down. I, I got to say that that's a little much. But this is going to be a big upset. Green Rockets, they've been doing a lot better. But they're down at the bottom of the bunch in the Conference B. And I look for that Green Rockets team to take out the Black Rams in an upset-ish. <laughs> All right. Well, upset-ish. 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 <laughs> okay. Yep. You're- that's technical. I'm going with the Sungary, Suntory Sun Goliath because I was over there many moons ago when Eddie Jones was coaching a young Todd Clever who was on that team and uh, George Gregan as the scrum half, and they won what was then the Professional League then, and I think they're going to win this weekend as marking that anniversary. Now we have to take a commercial break because we're just about out of time, but we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with our picks on the board for the top 14 and our Patty Power Pick of the Pack. We'll be right back. Been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has the taste and the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a... A naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. And with that, it's time for our final segment. I know it's sad. I know you guys are welling up with tears, 
but we only have time for our Patty Power pick of the pack. John. You see this little cow here? Yeah. It's got a little thing here. You press his hand and it says something. That's what I'm going to do to Rucky. I got, he's coming down to Texas. I got a bunch of boys going to show up with the pickup trucks. They're going to run over Rucky and we're going to stuff him. And I'm going to have Rucky on the show and I'm going to have a little thing on his little hand here. I put it. And he goes, hi, I'm Rucky. Oh my God. A foul mouth cow. Wow. Hey, easy. I'm going Patty Power Pick of the Week. I'm going Seattle. Gift? Yo, this week, my Patty Power goes to an amazing team who absolutely whacks a uh, really Argentinian Argentina team, all right? To the Cobras, and they're going to do it again against the Yacare of Paraguay. Ooh, all right. Bam! My pick, I'm going to the top four team. Parsica, there is value for somebody out there to make some francs. So I'm going with Ronan O'Gara's La Rochelle to smoke, pow. If you're enjoying this show, you're smoking something too. <laughs> On that note, uh, we're out of time, but before we let you guys go, any plugs, gift? Hey, HBCU Rugby Classic, and you will hear it each and every week, March 31st, April 2nd, 2023. We're giving it big, supported by Young Glory, Old Glory, A-Stat, Citizen Sports, and the Gift Time family, yo. I... Guys got to get into this. Like it's, it's, it's going to be so legit. It's going to be hbcurugbyclassic.com to get your tickets. Say that slower gift. Say that, that website slower. Hbcurugbyclassic.com so at Howard this- University. Get your tickets. On that note, we are out of time. Thank you to Mr. Will McGee. Thank you to John Bradshaw Layfield, the WWE legend. Thank you to King Gift A. Bailu, And thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including MLR Weekly and the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Join our weekly newsletter. And please sign up for our Red Cross Blood Donor team.